Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Note 20 Ultra 5G. And I wanted to help you decide which one would be best for you. And so in this comparison, I'll compare everything from price all the way up to speed, cameras, and more. And so the first thing is the price. The iPhone 12 Pro Max comes in at $1,099 and goes up to $1,399. You have three options as far as storage, 128, 256, and 512 gigabytes. It does not have expandable memory. With the Note 20 Ultra, it's actually a little bit more expensive to start with at $1,299, and that will give you 128 gigabytes of storage. There's also an additional option for $1,440 with 512 gigabytes of storage. Now we do have some color options as well, of course, with the iPhone, this is the new Pacific blue color, but we also have silver, gold, and then graphite, which is basically space gray that we had before. With the Note 20 Ultra, there's a new mystic bronze color that's sort of a matte color, similar to the iPhone, and then this is mystic white, and there's also mystic black, so you have those variants as well. Now, both of them are built fairly similarly. They're both stainless steel on the outside edge, and then they have glass front and back. Now with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, you have what's called ceramic shield, which is supposed to be four times less likely to break in the event that you drop it. With the Note 20 Ultra, you have Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus. Whether or not they're the exact same is hard to say, but they are built a little bit differently. So if you were to drop the 12 Pro, for example, or the 12 Pro Max, you will hit the frame as opposed to the glass because the glass is inset into the frame. Where on the Note 20 Ultra, it's sort of rounded around the edges. Now, if we go Go around the outside edge you can see again they're both stainless steel and on the iphone 12 pro max we have the power sleep wake button and then a 5g millimeter wave antenna on the note 20 ultra we have a power sleep wake button and a volume button above that and nothing else on the top they're a little bit different there's not really anything on the 12 pro max but on the note 20 ultra we have our sim card tray and memory expansion as well as a microphone so if we take a sim card removal tool pop this SIM card tray out. You'll see that we have the additional SIM card option as well as dual SIM card and then SD card. So if you want to use a micro SD to expand the storage, you can do that. You cannot expand the storage on the iPhone. On the bottom, the iPhone has a microphone on one side, speaker on the other, and of course, lightning in the middle. The Note 20 Ultra has a USB-C connector microphone, speaker, and then it has the S Pen. So you have a pen here, and we'll talk more about this in a little bit, but you have the pen if you want to use that as a stylus on your display. On the left-hand side of the phone, there's not really anything when it comes to the Note 20 Ultra, but on the iPhone, you have your silent switch, your volume buttons, and then your SIM card tray. It's not a dual SIM. It, it accepts one SIM card, and then you have an eSIM internally. You cannot do dual 5G with this as well with dual SIM cards. Now the overall size of both phones is a little bit different as well. The Note 20 Ultra is a little bit taller, so you do have a little extra height there, but the width is basically the same and the camera bumps are a little bit different. The 12 Pro Max actually has lenses that stick out further, but the overall camera bump on the 20 Ultra is a little bit larger as well. So it's sort of their decision in how they did this, but the Note 20 Ultra has a larger camera bump where the 12 Pro Max has larger lenses, but the bump itself is recessed a little bit more. Now the overall feel of them is a little bit different. The 12 Pro Max actually has squared off edges, which makes it a little bit easier to grip. There's more surface area where the Note 20 Ultra digs into your palm a little bit, which helps secure it, but with the curved edges of not only the glass, but the back glass and the frame as well, there's less surface area to hold on to. However, the Note 20 Ultra feels a little bit nicer if, you don't, if you're not holding it down into your palm like that. So if you're holding it up here, I think the, the Note 20 Ultra feels a little bit thinner, just feels a little bit more futuristic, and that edge-to-edge -edge display looks a little bit more futuristic. Now, both of them have great displays. On the iPhone, you have really a Samsung display or manufactured by Samsung to Apple specifications. And the display is great on both. In fact, the iPhone has actually been rated higher by those that actually rate displays, but both of them are amazing displays. Both have different unlocking as well. And you can see that already. The iPhone is using face ID. You just pick up the phone and it unlocks on the note 20 ultra. You have under the screen fingerprint sensor. So all you need to do pick the phone up, put your finger down. Once you learn where that spot is, it unlocks. Sometimes it's a little bit hit or miss on the Note 20 Ultra. I find that 
it works really well most of the time, but then sometimes I have to push there a couple different times. You can do different unlocks as well, but the most secure on either is either face ID or the fingerprint sensor. Now, while they're both big phones, the note 20 ultra is a little bit lighter. The note 20 ultra comes in at 7.33 ounces or 208 grams, where the 12 pro max is 8.03 ounces or 228 grams. Now, when it comes to the displays, like I said, they're both amazing displays. Apple's display is a 6.7 inch super retina XDR display 2778 by 1,284 with 458 pixels per inch. It has true tone supports HDR has a regular brightness of 800 nits and goes up to 1200 nits with HDR. They're easily viewable in daylight. Both of them are, but with the note 20 ultra, you have an even bigger display, 6.9 inch quad HD plus dynamic AMOLED with a two times infinity O display. That's for the cutout for the camera. And then also it's 3,088 by 1,400. 140 pixels with 496 pixels per inch. It's HDR 10 plus certified has 120 Hertz refresh rate, depending on the resolution you choose and has a normal brightness of 680 nits and goes up to 1600 nits at high brightness. So with the note 20 ultra, you have a brighter display and 120 Hertz. Now, both of them have stereo speakers. So you have a speaker in the top here. that's sort of hidden on the note 20 ultra, but it's there. And then also speakers on the bottom. Now let's go into YouTube so you can hear an example of what the speakers sound like. So we'll open it up here. I've got these paused at the same place. We'll rotate the displays here. Photos and videos from the forward facing and rear cameras as well. So here's the Note 20 Ultra. Those and videos from the forward facing and rear cameras as well. So both of them sound pretty decent, but the 12 pro max just sounds a little bit better, has a little bit better bass, and seems to go a bit louder. Now with the forward facing cameras, they're a little bit different on both with the iPhone. You have a 12 megapixel camera and F 2.2 aperture with 4k with Dolby vision HDR. You can record HDR on the forward facing camera and you can also record 4k on the note 20 ultra. It has a 10 megapixel F 2.2 aperture that can do 4k 60. So they both can do 4k 60 out of the front camera. They're both decent cameras and the iPhone usually has the edge when it comes to cameras, but I wanted to do a quick comparison so you could see it. So we'll switch it around here. We'll do a quick comparison so you can see it. The colors are very different on both of them. So take a look at these and see what you think as far as the actual front facing camera on both of them. So this is the forward facing camera of the Note 20 Ultra and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. You can see they look a little bit different. Both have the capability of going up to 4K and the Note 20 Ultra can also do 4K and HDR on both of the cameras. So you both have the ability, basically the same exact abilities with the forward facing camera. Also, the background looks a little bit different on the Note 20 Ultra than it does on the 12 Pro Max. So let me know which one you think looks best in the comments below. And then also the microphones from the 12 Pro Max may sound a little bit different as well. So with the Note 20 Ultra, the microphone will sound a little bit different, but in general, they both look pretty great. Now, when it comes to the rear cameras, they're very similar in the sense that they each have three lenses, but there's some big differences as well. With the iPhone 12 Pro Max, we have triple 12 megapixel cameras. We have an ultra wide F 2.4, a wide F 1.6 with sensor shift stabilization, meaning the sensor itself is on a float and it's more like what we have with mirrorless cameras today. And then we also have a telephoto zoom F 2.2 up to 2.5 X optical zoom or five X optical zoom punching into the sensor. And then we have LIDAR, which helps with augmented reality, but also also autofocus as well on the note 20 ultra. It's a very different 
story when it comes to the sensors and what we have here. We have a 108 megapixel f1.8 with laser autofocus and optical image stabilization. So you still have sort of laser autofocus with the sensor here that helps with focusing. And then you also have a 12 megapixel f3.0 120 millimeter periscope telephoto zoom lens that can go up to 50 X. So that's down here. It's actually the sensors over here and it's sort of a periscope to help it zoom like that. And then finally you have a 12 megapixel F 2.2 ultra wide. So you've got those options and 8k at 24 frames per second or 4k 60 HDR on the note 20 ultra. So you have 4k 60 HDR on both, but both of them are very different when it comes to photos and videos. Photos look great on both. I think you'll like both. And I have a sample here. I'll show you in a moment, but video is very different. In fact, the 12 pro max tends to be a little bit better with video. Both are acceptable, but take a look and see what you think. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, when it comes to the specs, those can mean a lot to some people and not as much to others. For example, the iPhone 12 pro max has the a 14 bionic CPU with six gigs of Ram. Now an Android user is going to say six gigs of Ram isn't much, but on an iPhone, that's the most they've ever put. And it seems to be super fast without any issues. It has the next gen neural engine as well. With the note 20 ultra, we have Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 plus. And it's also an Exynos 990 outside of the U S. So if you're in the United States, it tends to be the better processor. And then you have 12 gigabytes of Ram. So you've got double the Ram, but because one is Android and one is iOS, they're a little bit different. So with iOS, you know what you're getting. It's the same on all of them with Android. You can customize it. And this is Samsung's interface. I'm not a huge fan of it. And I do customize it from time to time. I like some of the features like the slide in window here, and you've had widgets for years. So you have some advantages with the note 20 ultra, but it's really comes down to preference when it comes to that. But let's take a look at the speed a little bit. Let's open a game here. I recently freshly installed a couple games here. So let's see if we can open that and let's open asphalt nine on both. It's the first time they're being opened on either phone. We'll give it a moment and we'll see what we've got. They're both loading. So you can see here, let me just set these down so you get a better idea. So the note 20 ultra loaded fastest. We'll just put this in here. Now, technically the note 20 ultra loaded a little bit faster this time, but we'll give it a moment. You'll see here it loaded faster again. That's not always the case. It just depends on what you're doing. However, when you're playing the game, that's obviously where it's going to make the difference. So we're waiting for it to load here. 
and you get the idea. So you can see the actual difference between load times on either of them. And you're going to have the same sort of experience, but the display on the note 20 ultra is noticeably smoother. And that's just because it's a 120 Hertz panel. And that's something Apple didn't do this year, sadly. So as you can see, smoothness is probably going to look the same for you in the video, but it gives you an idea of what to expect. Now, also, if we open up another game, let's try among us here. We'll just open this, see how long it takes to load. It's the first time I'm opening it on either. We'll hit okay. And we'll hit, I understand. We'll hit local and you'll see everything seems to be the same. And with certain things, you're not really going to notice much of a difference. In that case, the iPhone loaded the game a little bit faster. It's so minute, the differences between each of them when it comes to speed with most tasks that I don't think you're going to notice a difference there. Now, one thing to note is both of the phones are getting a little bit warm around where their CPUs are. That's to be expected when playing intensive games. But for the most part, you're going to have similar experiences, but the Note 20 Ultra was noticeably faster there. Now, as far as Android, Android versus iOS. Well, when it comes to apps, they're basically the same. You're going to find the comparable app on either operating system. So you're going to have everything from weather widgets that we have here on the display to maybe an app for your car to YouTube, to all of your social media. So you'll see we have the same thing, Discord and Telegram, which are linked below. And then also you're going to have just about every single game and everything like that. So all of the same sort of apps are on both platforms. Android is the largest selling platform in the world, but iOS users tend to buy more apps. It seems like overall. Now it just depends what you're looking for, but overall apps on iOS tend to be a little bit more smooth in general or more refined. But when it comes to the amount of apps, there really isn't a difference between either one. You're going to find what you need on both devices. Now the overall experience on both of them, other than playing a game, for example, feels a little smoother on the note 20 ultra if you have the 120 Hertz option enabled. So as you're scrolling through different pages, the experience is just smoother. That's just the nature of 120 Hertz. However, iOS in general is very smooth and animation speeds are a little bit slower, but that 120 Hertz definitely makes a difference. You'll see how smooth everything just looks just scrolling page to page. That does make a big difference between the phones. You're going to notice that difference in everything you do. So when you're using it, you're going to see that difference. And of course you have all the customization and the features of Android that you get, but there is some support differences as well. So iOS 14, you're going to get at least five years of iOS updates and you're going to get them regularly and at the same time as everybody else. So when you're using iOS, you're going to get those updates immediately when they're available to everyone with Android, you're going to have to wait. They sort of roll out. Now, Samsung is guaranteeing those updates for three years, and they do seem to be on top of those monthly updates that come out at the beginning of every month, but they're not on the same day for everyone. And sometimes they roll out staggered depending on your device, what processor you have, and you have to wait for Samsung, not Google to update Android. So that's just something that sets the Android ecosystem back a little bit. I think if that gets updated and say the update comes out to everyone at the same time, well, then it puts them on an equal playing field there. But again, you're going to have longer support with the iPhone and your value over time is going to be higher when you want to resell a phone or maybe switch to something new. And then the used prices will be better for the iPhones as opposed to the Android phones. That's just part of the deal with those. However, with the note, you also have things like the stylus, for example. So you have extra features. If a stylus is important to you, of course, you can create a note, you can draw on things, you can say hello and it's super fast and smooth. And if you want to use this as a notepad, you can, you also have decks, wireless decks. So if you want to use this as a little computer on the go, you can do that. You have a ton of options that you don't get with the iPhone that you get with Android and specifically with the note. Now, one thing you get with Android that you don't get with iOS that a lot of people want is split screen. You do get picture in picture in certain apps, but split screen is something you don't get at all with iPhone that you can get with Android currently. So maybe we want to open, let's say Spotify here and let's bring in another app. So we'll go over here, tap on the top of the app, open in split screen, and then maybe we want to bring in YouTube here. So now we've got two apps at once. So that's pretty 
nice of course we can use both split them however we want and now we've got the ability to use two apps at once so we can message text message watch a video at the same time without having any interference with notifications or anything like that so there definitely is some advantages to android as far as overall customization and other options as well but when it comes to battery life there's a very big difference. The iPhone 12 pro max actually gets quite a bit more battery life than the note 20 ultra. And that's sort of surprising because the note 20 ultra has a bigger battery in it. The 12 pro max has a 3,687 milliamp hour battery and the note 20 ultra has a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. Now you would expect the note to get better battery life, but it just doesn't. So the note 20 ultra I'm seeing about six to seven hours of screen on time or the 12 pro max I'm getting about 10 to 12 hours of screen on time with normal use. I'm seeing much better battery life overall with the 12 pro max. That could be the difference between the 120 Hertz display or not. And the note 20 ultra is good depending on how you set it up as far as battery. Now, both of them have fast charging 15 watt wireless fast charging. And of course we have Apple's new MagSafe adapters, which use magnets to attach to the back and charge the phone. So you'll have accessories that use this. Once Apple comes out with something new, a ton of accessory makers jump on and start creating things, whether that be car mounts to hold these and everything else that's limited with the note 20 ultra. You will have a lot of interesting accessories, but you don't get everything jumping out to make accessories and things like that. You do get interesting cases though, like this one, this is the note 20 ultra case. When you turn the phone on, you've got a little notification of what your battery is. The time when you open it up, it switches to the normal display, close it again. It jumps back to this. So you get these interesting accessories from Samsung, but again, they're limited because there's not as many people making making accessories as more people seem to buy accessories for iPhones, for example, and it will sort of sustain itself for many years to come. So that's something that's a little bit different. Also, the IP ratings are a little bit different. Apple really upped the game this year with IP 68, six meters for 30 minutes where the note 20 ultra is IP 68, but only five feet for 30 minutes in fresh water is what they specify. So they're both water resistant. If you get some splashes on them, they're not going to be a problem, but there is a difference when it comes to that. Now, which one should you choose? Well, for me, I choose the iPhone for a couple different reasons. One of them is. One of the most important things to me is the camera and video camera specifically. So that's something I value a lot. And also the iOS ecosystem because my entire family and almost every one of my friends uses iOS using things like iMessage or find my friends with my family and those specific things to iOS make a big difference to me. However, when it comes to overall usability, if that was not a factor for me, I probably would use the note because this is one of my favorite phones of the year of 2020. This was my favorite design, I think of any phone. And just in general, it's something that I really like. It feels very high end. It's light enough. It's got a great camera. And if I was to use Android as my full-time operating system, I would not hesitate to use this whatsoever. You also of course have Wi-Fi six and all of the same wireless connectivity and 5g as well on both of them. So you're really not losing anything as far as that. You just have the better battery on the iPhone. You have more customization and options on the note 20 ultra, and you also have reverse wireless charging on this for things like your headphones. So should maybe your AirPods get low on battery, you can't just flip the iPhone over and start charging it. You can't do that with an iPhone on the Samsung. You can. So for example, if we go into our settings here, turn on wireless power share, flip it over, put our headphones on there, they'll start to charge and you can see the light light up that they're actually charging. So you can reverse wireless charge on this device. You could charge an iPhone with this. You could do whatever you'd like as far as that goes. So, if you want to charge an iPhone, put the iPhone on it. Now you can wireless power share. You're charging an iPhone. So I wish Apple would bring more things like that to compete a little bit differently, but in general, both are great phones. So I would pick whatever your budget allows for and whether or not you like Android or iOS, because both, both of them offer the best experience in their class for their operating systems. Now let me know which one you would choose and why in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and see what you have to say when it comes to that. If you'd like to get your hands on the wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.